comes from Psalm 66 and it will be excerpted. Make a joyful shout to God all the earth. Sing out the honor of his name. Make his praise glorious. Say to God how awesome are your works. Through the greatness of your power your enemies shall submit themselves to you. All the earth shall worship you and sing praises to you. They shall sing praises to your name. Come and see the works of God. He is awesome in his doing toward the sons of men. He turned the sea into dry land. They went through the river on foot. There we will rejoice in him. He rules by his power forever. His eyes observe the nations. Do not let the rebellious exalt themselves. Come and listen, all you who fear God, and I will de declare what he has done for my soul. I cried to him with my mouth, and he was extolled with my tongue. If I had regarded iniquity in my heart, the Lord would not have heard. And certainly God has heard me. He has attended to the voice of my prayer.
Christ alone. Lord, remind us that your call is not just to the treasured time of worship or to those peaceful moments of prayer, but because of your resurrection, it is to move with courage into the encounters and arenas of life where many have not heard the gospel's call. Help us to speak when it is not easy to act, when it is not safe, to just go along with the wrong is not us. Help us to know that this is the day of Jesus Christ. His kingdom will come and let us, O oh God, be bound by a love amazing and divine and then go out from this service and embrace a weary and despairing world. Thank you for your word. Thank you for the Sabbath day you have made. And we will rejoice and we will be glad in it. In your name, Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. <clears throat> Excuse me. In some housekeeping, my name is Reverend Dr. Mary Jane Miles. I pastor the first and the second church, Indian Presbyterian churches <coughs> in Canada, Idaho. We appreciate all those that follow us on Facebook for our worship services. We are still contemplating on opening up the churches. <coughs> Second church has not, is not going to open their church for a while. The elders will decide if this church will be open. If you would like to make any donations of which we have received to either church, sorry, put either first church or second church on your check or where, whatever your envelope is, says P.O. Box number one, Canaanite, Idaho, 83536, Kitsi Area. We appreciate everyone and uh, we want to be safe and safe for you and safe for us. But we are lonesome in getting back to worshiping with each other. So we'll get right into our worship service. I have two scriptures that I want to reference. This is Pentecost. And I am wearing red because of it is Pentecost. And so I'm going to read from Acts 2, 147, but I'm only going to excerpt those um, scripture that I want to talk about here. When the day of Pentecost had fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled the whole house where they were sitting. Then there appeared to them divided tongues as of fire, and one sat upon each of them and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Men of Israel, hear these words. Jesus of Nazareth, a man attested by God to you by miracles, wonders, and signs which God did through him in your midst, as you yourselves know, him being delivered by the determined purpose and foreknowledge of God, you have taken by lawless hands 
have crucified and put to death, whom God raised up, having loosed the pains of death, because it was not possible that, she, that he should be held by it. This is the birth of the church that is found in the book of Acts. The book of Acts is written by the same author as the Gospel of St. Luke. The Pentecost is also called the Feast of Weeks, and it was 10 days after the Lord's ascension into heaven that this was celebrated by the Jewish people in Jerusalem. The Jewish people recognize three festivals that they always go to in Jerusalem. The first one is uh, a Passover feast, which um, is the Feast of Unleavened Bread. And then this one, the Feast of Weeks, which is the Pentecost. And then the Feast of Tabernacles, when they lived in booths and tents in the wilderness. We are talking about the Holy Ghost here, the Holy Spirit. Jesus was baptized in the Jordan by his cousin John the Baptizer. A dove lights on him to signify that he is filled with the Holy Spirit, the powerful Holy Spirit. And a voice comes from heaven saying, this is my son. So all three persons of the divine are there. Joshua, as we heard last week about uh, crossing the Jordan, has the same name as Jesus. Jesus and Joshua are the same name in, in the Hebrew. And he is taking the Israelites into the promised land, just as Jesus, our Lord, is taking us into the promised land. And this is manifest upon the, upon the Transfiguration, Mount of Transfiguration, when they talk about the exodus that Jesus will take from Jerusalem, which will be the cross of Golgotha. In Pentecost, the Hebrew is Shavuot, and it marks the anniversary of the giving of the law to the Israelites at Mount Sinai. It celebrates also the theophany of God's appearance at Mount Sinai to Moses, the lawgiver. Pentecost now forever marks the granting of the Holy Spirit to the Jewish nations and they believe and celebrate their indwelling of this Holy Spirit at Mount Moriah, the temple. The Hebrew Feast of Harvest, Exodus 23, 16, is the end of the barley season, which began at the Passover season, and a sheaf called the Omar is brought to the temple for their offering. Pentecost can also be commemorated as the season of the giving of the Torah at Mount Sinai. The Jewish people are very good at remembering what Yahweh has done for them in bringing them out of Egypt. This also included when Moses first returned to the bottom of the mountain when they had made an idol calf of gold, golden calf. He destroyed the two tablets containing the Ten Commandments. He instructed his own tribe, the Levites, to kill the idolaters. The Levites struck down 3,000 before God mercifully restrained them from decimating the whole nation a very terrifying act of God. In Acts 2, 2, 4, it also describes the strange 
supernatural manifestations that suddenly and rapidly envelop the disciples. A noise resembling a violent wind was heard, but it was not felt. And it suddenly filled the temple. In scripture, this is known as Ruah, spirit, and it is a common symbol of the Holy Spirit. It is a prominent example in the resembling and resuscitation of the Valley of Dry Bones in Ezekiel 27, when the wind represents the Spirit of God, and they come together, the bones come together by the Word of God, by the Spirit of God, into an army of the Lord. This was followed by a supernatural pyrotechnic display. A mass of something like fire appeared and it was clearly visible, but not, but not felt. And it was like tongues that settled on the top of the apostles' heads. And it was to rest on each disciple, and it conveyed the fact that the Holy Spirit had dramatically arrived just as Jesus said it would. John the Baptist had said, I baptize you with water, but he who comes after me will baptize you with fire. Luke's description resembles the description of God's Shekinah glory at Mount Sinai. And then the filling of the temple upon its dedication found in 2 Chronicles, chapter 5, verse 14. The Holy Spirit, again, gloriously manifesting himself in the midst of Israel. We feel the power that is in these verses that make us realize the Holy, the Holy Spirit is certainly the third person of the triune God. Philo, who is a first century Jewish historian, describes the giving of the Torah at Mount Sinai and emphasizes both the fire of God and the language of God as communicating his will to his people. And a voice sounded forth from out of the midst of the fire, which had flowed from heaven, a most marvelous and awful voice, the flame being endowed with articular speech in a language familiar to the hearers, which expressed its words with such clearness and distinctness that the people seemed rather to be seeing rather than hearing it. Almost reminiscent of one of the plagues that Yahweh put on Pharaoh, that it would be so dark he would feel it. John's Gospel in the King James Version records, In the last day, that great day of the feast, Jesus stood and cried. When I think about that word cried, there's a billboard on the way to a cul-de-sac from Lapway that say, she roared, and it's talking about cancer, and the lady looks so calm, but in this, um, when, and he cried, Jesus is actually roaring, roaring out what he's saying to the people. In the last day, that great day of the feast, Jesus stood and cried, roared, saying, If any man thirst, 
let him come unto me and drink. He that believeth on me, as scripture has said, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living waters. But this he spake of the Spirit, which they that believe on him should receive. For the Holy Ghost was not yet given, because that Jesus was not yet glorified. That great day that Jesus was glorified, he even spoke of at his first miracle to his mother, my day has not yet come. St. Luke records that about nine o'clock, the 12 apostles gathered in the house in which the awesome manifestation of the Holy Spirit visitations are experienced. Luke indicates throughout the book of Acts narrative that the gift of tongues was given for the purpose of proving the apostolic calling, the office, and the witness of the apostles. The speaking was in actual languages that all the peoples around them could understand. It was not a babbling as the Tower of Babel's intent was in the Old Testament when Yahweh did not want mankind assuming they could build beyond their imagination even to the heavens above. The proving out of God's Holy Spirit on Pentecost would have been profoundly appreciated by the Jewish recipients. The anniversary that they were celebrating of the divine gift of the Torah was the most eloquent of moments and it was also an eloquent moment of the revealing of the Divine Spirit. When you talk to a Jewish person today, they really do love the Torah, the Pentateuch. Those are those books that they hold sacred. This was indeed the logical sequence to the Sinai experience. The God who came near had now come ultimately near as he indwelled believers with his Holy Spirit. Our bodies are now the temple of the Holy Spirit. with stammering lips and other tongues, with known, intelligible, spoken languages, these Pentecost worshipers are witnesses to the birth of the church, to the birth of who we are. We are the church. Visitors and residents in the Jerusalem area at that day traced the noise of the speaking in other tongues and hurried to it where they felt it was coming from. Momentarily, they stood speechless. They looked at these poor, ignorant Galileans who were fluently speaking in various tongues, in foreign dialects, and every one of them was praising God and proclaiming his wonderful works in other tongues. The hearers were very devout keepers of Moses' law, else they would have never journeyed to Jerusalem for this specific feast.
Joel, the prophet Joel that will be recorded later on in the chapter, had forecast, and it shall come to pass, I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. The Old Testament prophets are now coming into reality. Not everyone was thrilled to see this manifestation of tongues. The scribes and the Pharisees recognized Jesus' followers and they smirk. They are full of new wine. New wine was the most intoxicating of all. The dried grapes were soaked in old wine and when pressed a second time, it produced wild, delirious emotions. This is what they thought they had drank. The doubters in this crowd disdained the supernatural by labeling it gibberish of drunkards. When the life of the spirit is placed within our earthly vessels, our temples, we begin to taste the heavenly wine. How sad it is that so many Christians stop with a water baptism and never advance to fill their new resurrected spirits in this life, the Pentecostal life. It is almost like the Lord is leading us to the promised land, but we need to enjoy the journey with our Lord through the Holy Spirit. Luke 11, 13. If you then, though you are evil, know how to give gifts to your children, how much more will your Father in heaven give the Holy Spirit those who ask him. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. When a child is born into this world, it is powerless until the child begins breathing. The same is true with our spiritual life. After emerging from water baptism, we have entered into the covenant community of the family of God. Here it is First Church. But there is no life at all until we are filled with the Holy Spirit of God through Jesus Christ. We know that we need to ask our Lord and he will indeed give it. Peter's argument that they could not possibly be drunk at nine o'clock in the morning, in the Jewish culture, Jews drank in the evening. Nine o'clock was one of the three appointed Jewish times of prayer when morning sacrifices were being offered. Peter reminded the crowd that no drinking place would be opened at that hour, and it would especially be closed on one of those three holidays. I want to read now from John 16, verses 7 through 15. And this is our Lord Jesus speaking. But I tell you the truth, it is for your good that I go away. Unless I go away, the counselor will not come to you. But if I go, I will send him to you. When he comes, he will convict the world of guilt in regard to sin and righteousness and judgment. 
in regard to sin because men do not believe in me in regard to righteousness because I am going to the Father. When you can see me no longer and in regard to judgment because the prince of the world now stands condemned. I have much more to say, more than you can now bear. But when the spirit of truth comes, he will guide you all into the truth. He will not speak on his own. He will speak only what he hears. And he will tell you what is yet to come. He will bring glory to me by taking what is mine and making it known to you. All that belongs to the Father is mine. That is why I said the Spirit will take from what is mine and make it known to you. Thank you, Jesus. I want to offer a prayer for the church and for thankfulness for the Holy Ghost. There is no color barrier with God. God is colorblind. There are many practical problems which still have to be wisely and understandingly worked out. But he will do it. One thing is certain, that the color barrier and the Christian church cannot go together. It was the world which God so loved and displays his creativity, his artistry in the human beings and within the church. It is the world which is the family of God. So make us one, Lord, in our eagerness to speak good news and set all the captives free. Give us your Holy Spirit. Make us one, Lord, in concern for the poor, the hurt, and the downtrodden, to show them your love. Make us one, Lord, in worship, breaking bread together, and singing your praise with a single voice. Make us one, Lord, in faithfulness to Jesus Christ, who never fails us, and he will come again with a shout of acclamation. And now give us your Holy Spirit, God our Father, so we may have among us the same mind that was in Christ Jesus, and proclaim him now, to the world that is in distress and chaotic. May every knee bow down and every tongue confess him, even if it is not our own tongue, our mother tongue. Confess him to be Lord, to the glory of your wonderful name, Jesus the Christ. And the benediction is taken from Hebrews 13. Now may the God of peace, who brought up our Lord Jesus from the dead, that great shepherd of the sheep, through the blood of the everlasting covenant, make you complete in every good work to do his will working in you what is well-pleasing in his sight, through Jesus Christ, to whom be glory forever and ever.